Hey, Mitch. Oh, hey, Ed. How are you? I'm not Ed. I'm Batman. Right, Batman. So what are we doing? No, Batman. Yeah, I know. You said that already. What are we talking about tonight? No, we're talking about Batman. 1989, Batman. Oh, Batman 89. I love that with Michael Keaton. I've got so much memorabilia upstairs. Let me go get it. No, no, no. Don't move. Don't move. How much do you weigh? Uh, 108. 100. Really? That little? Okay. Hold on. I've got an idea. Ready? Uh, that's never happened to me before. Bet you said that a lot. Why Let's just start, start the show. show. Hi, this is Ed Dollister. And this is Mitch Halleck. And welcome to another episode of Mitch and Ed's Excellent Adventure. If it's your first time here, welcome. Um, if you're one of our many subscribers, thank you for coming back. Guess what, Mitch? We've got 349 subscribers. We're just that one off. Yeah, we need that one more. And you know what? You could be that lucky person if you're not subscribed by just simply hitting the button it's like firing up the bat signal and boom you will be notified every time ed and i get in the car and zoom off for another excellent adventure into movies tv toys and more right here on the old youtube what are we talking about today my friend we're talking about batman today but in particular batman 1989 the uh groundbreaking 1989 superhero movie um we're going to be talking a little bit about how it came to be um who was in it um its legacy some of the merchandise we've sort of spoke a little bit already about uh batman 89 indirectly and i'll put a link up uh up there um where you can watch mitch eat some 1989 oh yeah my stomach yeah i forgot about that i was like wait when oh yeah that nasty cereal back there yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. right. We, boy, I think we boy. did that for our, was that for our 100th subscriber or? A we should have saved it for our 10 millionth subscriber. <laughs> it was something else. But I'll tell you what. Yes. I re- I'm just thinking back of all the stuff. I remember being in the 70s and the 80s and, you know, Batman was a fixture on television around here. It was the old Adam West show. Yep. And then there was a bunch of cartoons and we've covered that mm-hmm. in our Super Friends stuff when we talk about the 70s and the Batman TV show. But the only live action Batman prior to 1989 was when Adam West and Burt Ward reprised their roles in those two horrible NBC TV superhero specials in the 70s. Yes. But from then till 1989, there was no such thing as a live action Batman. Mm. And I suppose we have to thank for um, the genesis of a new Batman film, really Superman, the movie. And it, you know, I think it is the, the, um, the gold standard of all superhero movies. And really that spurred um, an interest in creating a Batman movie. And I know Tom Mankiewicz who worked on Superman, the movie was in early development um, of a Batman script that they were looking at. They were looking at um, getting an unknown perhaps to play Batman with uh, David Niven as Alfred um, I think they were looking at William Holden as Commissioner Gordon. They were looking at all these um, interesting casting choices, which never, never came to be. But the script did remain in development for many years and into the uh, 1980s, is, which is when uh, Tim Burton was attached to it. Yeah, well, well, the funny thing is, is the property of Batman was lying around for years and it was Michael Uslin. <laughs> Who mm-hmm. picked up the rights to it for almost not a lot of money because you're right it was the superman success the movie with christopher reeve that suddenly started people thinking about it so uslin and his partner i can't think of his name right now but we'll pop it up right here i think he just passed away i'm gonna say mesner maybe that's yep. his last name he uh they acquired the rights to batman and swamp thing too actually and they said let's try to make a live action batman film that's why when you watch any batman animated show or movie whatever tv series like gotham or now the batman movies you'll always see michael uslin's name come up as executive producer because he owns the rights to the batman series but yeah they said let's make this big screen batman movie and the superman movies 
were the model that they were going for because they were successful. But then what happened is mid eighties, they stumbled with Superman three, Superman four, the quest for peace. None of these were successful like the first ones, one and two. And then maybe the, you know, the bloom was off the rose and people weren't really looking forward to making any big budget superhero movies because it just wasn't in the public domain. Nobody wanted to see that. Yeah, you know, it wasn't yeah. something. It's not like today like, where every second no. film is a superhero film. So no, no, and it wasn't actually until the a comic book came out in the mid '80s that totally revolutionized the whole idea of Batman and superheroes. Too, it was by author Frank Miller, who was the writer and artist on a book called The Dark Knight Returns, and that was about a more grizzled, older Batman who comes out of retirement, basically the Gotham city is just a hellhole. Crime is everywhere. The government doesn't care. Superman has become a puppet of the Reagan administration type of patriotic symbolism. And Batman just has had enough. The Joker breaks free and there's this gang called the mutants. They're running wild through Gotham and there's this lawlessness everywhere. And Batman comes out of retirement. There's a new Robin who's a young girl this time, as opposed to his young youthful ward. Uh, we find out that Batman had lost Robin somewhere along the line. One of the Robins, Dick Grayson, or one of the other ones there. So he's more of a Clint Eastwood character. He's mm -hmm. more serious. He's not jokey. He's not about bat copters and bat cycles and bat boats and all that stuff is out the window. And shock repellent. A, yeah, no, none of that. This is about a real you know, grim and dark, dark night, hence the name. And that's what they used when they said, we're going to make this new Batman movie when Tim Burton came, because all everyone thought about was the campy Adam West TV series. I mean, as popular as that show was, it really did a disservice to the character of Batman for at least 20 years, because all people thought of was that clown, the guy in the goofy tights and the, the shiny you know pants there and the little bat toosy type of thing i mean it was kitschy it was campy it was of its time in the 60s yep. but yep. i don't think that movie would have made a dollar if they put that on the big screen no well when you look at uh you know the other equivalents when we, we've spoken about doc savage which uh was uh you know a reasonably big budget you know a superhero i suppose you call yeah. a movie but that was campy and it, it that sort of i think after you know once once Star Wars came along and you look at those movies from uh, the seventies, Godfather, Apocalypse Now, um, the deer yeah. hunter, you know, I think people were looking for something a little bit more, um, you know, grounded and a little bit more real. And uh, even Star Wars, you know, it wasn't all shiny, was it? It was all, no, it was it was all used, that used universe. Movie. Yeah. And then it didn't set anyone's mind at ease when they announced the casting choice was going to be Michael Keaton who mm. at that time was only known for movies like Mr. Mom and uh, the Dream Team and Night Shift. I mean, he was a comedic actor. He was a stand-up comedian as well. He'd be on like David Letterman and he would do some shtick. So the whole idea that this kind of short, balding, really gawky actor is going to suddenly become this brooding superhero was not what people thought of when they thought of Batman. So that didn't help at all. If the internet was alive back then, if there was such a thing, it would have blown up with the casting choice of Michael Keaton. As it is, just word through the general media, you'd hear it at comic book conventions, people would talk about it at comic book shops. Mm -hmm. No one was happy with that casting choice. Well, I know that um, there was a letter writing campaign that you know people sent in saying this can't be wrong. And I believe they got, um, they even got Bob Kane on board to you know, yeah. sort of help quell, quell the, uh, you know, disdain of uh, Michael Keaton, but they weren't really happy either with, um, Tim Burton, because Tim Burton up to that point, he was attached um, a few years earlier, but he wasn't um, given the the go ahead to do it because he hadn't had a hit really. He had done Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Obviously, there was Beetlejuice, which um, yeah. he and Keaton yeah, Michael teamed, Keaton, yeah. to, teamed together. But you know that didn't uh, bode well for fans either because they think Pee Wee's. Uh, you know, uh, that's all I knew him as. I remember, yeah. yeah I, I remember seeing Pee Wee's Big Adventure. It was a great movie, hysterical, hmm. funny, but that's all I could think of. I was like, oh, yeah. I don't know about this, you know. So. They were concerned. There was a lot of concerns. They were concerned with um, Danny Elfman. Was he able to write the score? Even Danny Elfman was, was, yeah. was uh, concerned because that was his first big budget 
you know, movie and uh, would he be able to do it? So there were a lot of, a lot of trepidation, um, you know, when it comes to um, creating this film and also because it's such a beloved character and, you know, has been around even at that point for, you know, how many 50? Well, it was going on for his 50th anniversary. Yeah. yeah and they yeah. wanted it to be something spectacular when it came out because Batman started out in 1939. They were headed up for 1989, 50th anniversary. There was going to be postage stamps. Everybody yeah. was getting ready for this big Batman event. And that was the culmination when the movie premiered. The other thing that set everybody probably calmed their nerves, I'd say, was the casting of Jack Nicholson, who at the time, was probably the biggest star of the, on the planet. I mean, you mm -hmm. know, you had him from Cuckoo's Nest and then Terms of Endearment. I mean, he was just everywhere. And when they said that he was going to play the Joker, that kind of calmed people's nerves. They were like, well, okay, maybe it won't be so bad because he's not known to be like Cesar Romero yeah. wackiness. Yeah. I mean, it's Jack Nicholson. He is, looks like the devil himself. So maybe that'll calm people down. But there was also some other casting folks you had Billy D. Williams, who you and I both know as Lando Calrissian, yes. and he was going to be Harvey Dent. And fans yep. of the comic yep. book knew that he was eventually going to become Two Face. Un the unfortunately, he didn't. Uh, they got no, Tommy Lee Jones not. for the sequel, but uh, I do remember in an interview they had a press uh, uh, interview with uh, Billy D. Williams at the time of the movie, and he was going, "Look." These are the most amazing. It's he's had an amazing time, and these are the most amazing sets I've ever been yeah, on. And yeah. I've been on a Star Wars. You know, I, I was in Star Wars, and I felt a little betrayed. Yeah, I feel yeah. a bit. I, I actually feel a, a bit betrayed by Batman, but I'll talk a bit like. Okay, later no, well, the that. other thing was Sean Young was cast. Now I knew Sean Young. She was Rachel in the Blade Runner yes. movie, and then of course she was also in No Way Out. Yeah, with June. Kevin Costner. She was a she was a big thing back then. There was a comedy movie she did with John Candy. I can't. It was Soap Dish, or that might be Demi Moore. I just know no, that's uh, Sally Field was uh, Soap Dish uh, and Robert. Sean Danny Young. Was, well, she was just everywhere. Yeah. I mean, Sean yeah. Young was like every year there was a new movie and she was in it. So she was cast as Vicky Vale, the uh, female lead in the movie, and they were rehearsing for the Batman film. And there was going to be a sequence where they're on horseback mm -hmm. around Wayne Manor and they're attacked by the Joker's goons. And they, they escaped, but she fell off the horse. And I do believe she might have broke her pelvic bone or fractured. Collar, I think a collarbone. Collarbone, yeah. She was really she was laid up for a while, but they had production starting soon and they couldn't hold up anymore because they had to meet their their date, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the premiere date in June of 89. So they ended up casting Kim Basinger, who was also a very big starlet at the time in the late 80s. There she was in that James Bond movie. That's the first time. I remember seeing her was uh, the Sean Connery no never say never, never say again. never again. Yep. But nine and a half weeks with Mickey Rourke was the big movie that everybody knew her from at the time. So again, now you've got this stellar cast: hmm. Billy D. Williams, Kim Basinger, Jack, Jack Palance, Palance, Jack Palance too. Another well, I don't know City Slickers. I don't think that was out that was yet. 90, 91, I think. Um, yeah, so but everybody that... knew Jack Palance though because he'd been around forever. You know, yes. So he's been a very uh, you scary had looking fellow. Pat Hingle. Uh, you had Robert, Pat Hingle's Commissioner Gordon. Yes, yeah. Robert Wall, Robert your, uh, Wall, your friend. Yeah, my friend Robert Wall, who was at Terrificon uh, two years ago. Comedian was also cast as Alexander Knox. Mm -hmm. Our good friend William Hookins from Star Wars and Rage yes. Lost Ark fame was also in that movie. It had a and great cast. Garrick Hagen, who was Biggs Darklighter, was in it. What was he? He played um, a tourist family at the start. One of the, the father of these that was him? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that's him. That's Wedge. Not Wedge. That's uh Biggs. Biggs. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're right. That the dad is Biggs? Yeah. I never knew that all these years. Yeah. You know what the weird thing is? I had heard that they wanted Adam West to play that part as a cameo, but he refused to do it. But originally they were trying to get Adam West to show up. I did hear that. that because I felt like uh, I, from what I've read is that he was uh, a little, he, he assumed they'd cast him as Batman. Um, yeah. Well, you know, that was, I don't know what he was thinking because at the time he had to be in his late fifties, probably. He would, well, least. you know what? He actually probably was, you know, I suppose then, you know, when you look at movie stars of that age and they're, they're a lot younger yeah. then, but they look a lot older. Whereas I think right. we're a bit more um, age um accepting here yeah know? nowadays so, oh, well look at indiana jones you know he's gonna um, be 80 yeah yeah so um but uh no no we're and michael go or gal 
Is that Goff. how you pronounce his name? I call it Michael Goff. Goff but well, he's not here to correct us. He's no longer with us. But he was cast as Alfred, you know, Bruce Wayne's faithful butler yeah. and servant. And I do believe, I think I've got to go back. I know they were talking about having a Robin in the movie, but they'll save that for Batman Returns, which is the sequel. I, I did hear that um, they were interested in Kiefer Sutherland as playing um, Robin. Oh, I've never heard that one before. Yeah, so, I mean, they did cast the why, the, you know, the, it was the uh, casting for Batman, you know, everyone was asked. I, I, I was reading uh, this morning that Harrison Ford was even. Oh, come uh, on. In the, I really? did read that. I, I, you know, whether it's. You know, IMDb. Yeah. So you never know whether yeah, it's uh, yeah. accurate. Well, or Well, no, yeah, anybody could write on IMDb. And I was yeah. going to say, Jack Nicholson brought his friend Tracy Walters to play Bob the Goon. That's right. uh, just yeah, it was weird. It's like he has that much star power. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah I'm going to bring my buddy in. Oh, okay, whatever you want, Jack. You know. Well, he so. was sort of like his casting was akin to uh, um, Marlon Brando. Marlon Brando. You know? Yeah. And, and giving yeah, yeah, yeah. giving some legitimacy to the actual to the you know the project. I remember even there. seeing the movie posters, and it said like Keaton and Nicholson, or maybe it even said Nicholson. No, and it, Keaton. he did have to have um, top billing. Oh, it was uh, Nicholson. Yeah. Wow, yeah, because I remember the poster. I remember the funny thing is when the poster came out, I knew it immediately is the Batman logo that yep. was on his chest. And you can see it there. I remember people were confused. They didn't see the bat. They saw the negative image. Somebody said they thought it was like a mouth, like jaws, like a, a weird buck tooth. I mean, how do you see a mouth in this? I suppose like if it's uh, if it's really, because you didn't see, I don't think you saw the whole logo. You saw it sort of like, um, like cropped. a bit cropped. Yeah. But today, again, that. today, I mean, it was, it had, uh, that film had a marketing blitz um, oh, God, when it yeah. came out. And um, I remember uh, at the time they called it Batmania. This was. Yes, they did. It, yeah. it was everywhere. It you know? was, there, you couldn't go down a street without seeing 20 kids wearing a Batman logo t-shirt. It yep. was crazy. Yes. And my friend, Jerry Ordway, the comic book artist who also did the adaptation, of the 89 Batman film, he got to go to London to go see the sets because they would take photographs and he would use them to draw yes. the things because he had to get sign offs from all the actors, actors on their likenesses. Wow. You know, so it had to look like Nicholson. It had to look like Keaton. So Jerry got a lot of first, you know, up firsthand uh, sightseeing. I don't know what yep. you want to call it, but he said the same thing that uh, Billy D. Williams said. It was insane how big these sets were. I mean, the, the stairs of the Gotham City Town Hall, which you see a couple times in the movie, like for the big fight scene, and then they have the mayor there. And I think they even use it in the opening when the Joker shows up to kill one of the bad guys with a poison pen. It, I mean, we're talking a full-scale staircase and town hall set. So, I mean, it's a lot there. The Batcave. Uh, I don't know where that castle is. I think that's somewhere in England. The, mm -hmm. the one they use for Wayne Manor. Yep. Yeah, I'm yeah. not too sure. I've I mean, they had they, they did have a combination of you know real sets. They had some really nice um, uh, you know, matte paintings as well. They did, yeah. Um, yeah. in there. So it was a. I mean, it was still 1989. It was a uh, you know, you time know, where they hadn't they hadn't really started digital effects at that. point. No, you know what's weird though. I remember talking to Ordway about it. He was there on the set, like in November of 1988. Which is nuts now when you think about it, because you know I know how they make movies years ahead of time. Yep. But I don't know what it was. I mean, maybe because we're used to the word Star Wars schedule, like it's three years to make a movie. I mean, here it was in the fall and winter of '88, yep. and the yep. movie's going to come out in June of '89, which was only less than a year away, and they were just still putting it together. It just seems amazing to me that they had such a fast schedule. A shooting schedule and they can get this batman 89 movie out so quickly you know well and i do i remember reading that uh, jack nicholson stipulated in his contract he had a certain amount of time where he had you know this he had to start late 10 o'clock in the morning this and he had yeah. a certain yeah. window he had to uh, appear in so i suppose you know once everything's locked in and i think um it, it came in uh, it went a little bit it went over budget i know though it went over budget but i it was finished on time so yeah, it was. It, it was. And they, like I said, they were off schedule a little bit with the Sean Young accident when they got Kim Basinger yeah. to come in there. But I think it moved pretty quickly because, I mean, now that I think about it, there are a couple set effects, you know, the whole Gotham Tower and then the, the balloons and the Batmobile and yeah. all that stuff. But I mean, 
if you add it up, I don't think it's that many practical or special effects in the movie. Most of it's done practical. Yeah, I mean, and I think work. they can hide a lot, lot in the dark. I, um, I yeah. know that at the time, uh, people complained when they went. Down. It was so dark. Like it, it was so dark yeah. they couldn't see anything. No, no, I remember seeing in the theater. I was. You had to squint a couple times to make out. Yeah, you know yeah. some of the scenery, and you're like, was it a bad projector bulb or no? That yes. no, it was just it was very just dark on the screen, and you're like, what's what's going on? I can't yeah. see anything. It it hides Imagine, a lot. Yes, yeah, well, that's true. That's true, and that's why it's funny looking at the. Uh, I know on the um, I don't know if it was the DVD release or the uh, um, or the VHS release. They actually had to brighten it up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, no, the home video. Got, I remember the home video. I had the VHS tape. And uh, then when I got the uh, 30th anniversary, I think came out a year or so ago. Yeah, in, in 2019, they did a nice, clean Blu-ray digital version with it and all that stuff. It looked much nicer and, and sharper, and you could yep. see a lot more. I was like, oh, wow, I never noticed all that. Like, you know, you could see the texture on the, the Joker suits yes. and the, the stitching on it and all that, because you're right, years ago, it was just very muddy looking. You know what I'm going to tell you now that you'd be surprised my friend jerry ordwigan told me that william hookin's voice is dubbed in a scene uh -huh. which i didn't realize it because like i said hookin's is the chubbier actor who was in Hawkins, raiders and hey, porkins colonel, from yeah. star wars um was yeah, but, musgrove yeah colonel musgrove or porkins in star wars yeah. but there's that scene where he meets jack nicholson's character and they're in the alleyway and he's like well oh, where are you you know spending your nights jack and I did think his voice sounded kind of garbly and gravelly. Yep. And Jerry said, well, yeah, that's not his voice. They dubbed it. And I'm like, mm -hmm. well, I've never been able to verify if that's true or not, but it definitely did not sound like the same actor's voice who was in, mm -hmm. in Raiders and all that stuff. So I don't know why they would do that, but it is Look, what it is. You know, sometimes things aren't clear. You know, they have to do that. They couldn't get him back, maybe if they did all I think they did maybe. all their I think they did all their um the post-production work in the UK because I know Danny Elfman was um saying that he wasn't really happy with um the way that uh, his score was presented because it was all a bit buried under the 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 sound effects and dialogue. Yeah, yeah. But it was a, it's an interesting film as well because it's one of the first films to have two soundtracks you had the oh Danny god yeah. and score and then they brought uh on prince, prince. and uh, they were originally going to have prince doing all of joker's music yeah and yeah. then michael jackson was going to do all of uh batman's or the romantic uh music uh -huh. part of it pop songs but that did that fell through um so prince got to do it and i know tim burton wasn't exactly enamored with the idea of having this score he felt that they didn't really fit yeah. and i would say yeah. it's an odd choice i remember oh yeah um, but it's a it's a product of its time i suppose well, no you know? I, and the funnier thing is i never understood what the big deal was about prince because there was a music video there was the bat yeah. dance bat dance it was yeah. all over it. yeah and it, it was all over mtv they never stopped showing it but the thing is you can only hear two prince songs in the movie that i always remember in the beginning very briefly as they're showing old Gotham city, as you know, the tourists are about to get mugged. You see somebody walk by with like a boom box mm -hmm. and you hear, I've seen the future. And that's a yep. Prince song, but it's like a sampling. That's it. And then the other one is when the Joker breaks into, I think yeah, it's the gallery the museum, the art gallery. And they do that whole Joker theme song. And no, now I do at the parade when he comes in, they're playing yep. it. You know, the, the Prince songs playing. And he's like, Yay, who do you trust? You know, the Joker, blah, blah, blah. That's it. But that was the whole soundtrack. Was there, I think, a romance song on the end credits? That was another Prince song that they put in there. Cause where do you yeah, have um, enough content for a full album? Well, I think they had they had songs, you know, inspired by, you know, that famous Oh, that thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But that but was both, a huge seller. That was like millions of copies. Oh, yeah. So, and yeah. and the, the original score. And I did I really loved um. Danny Elfman's score. And again, I feel like that was a, again, a gold um, standard for um, dark brooding style yeah, heroes. Yeah. You know, John Williams was for the, uh, you know, well, the really brass, bright and, yeah. you know, that and uh, patriotic. And this was for the dark and brooding. And I know they tried it with, um, well, they certainly, when Danny Elfman did the year later, the um, Dick Tracy mm -hmm. um, soundtrack, the opening Dick Tracy's theme sounds very Batman-esque. Like Batman. The I've shadow got, does. Yeah. The 
uh, back there, Mondo uh, Records reissued it for the 30th anniversary, the whole Danny Elfman soundtrack, mm -hmm. and they did a special pressing, and it's got a purple uh, vinyl to it and all that, too. But it's got the full soundtrack and a lot of deleted. This happens a lot. The composer will make music for scenes that either get cut for editing purposes or they're just shortened when you see the final film, but there's a whole musical score that goes on. So that's actually a pretty good album there. Mm. You can listen to it because, yeah, there was a weird soundtrack history to this because i bought the soundtrack on cd years later i remember to have the uh the bat plane with and with the, the moon? moon yes with the moon that was the yeah the yeah. album but it, it didn't have all the songs i was like wait where's the big dun, 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 dun. it was it was yep. very choppy so that i think they did two back then as well but yeah and then i was gonna say with this movie the trailer for it oh my god i remember they premiered it on entertainment tonight and i taped it on my vcr yeah. And I must have watched that thing a zillion times because it was uh, now that I think about it, there was like no music score for it. It was just a bunch of scenes, maybe 90 seconds. Mm -hmm. And you saw the Batmobile and you saw some quick cuts of the actors faces and that was it. But that trailer just set the world on fire because I remember going into the movie theaters, just getting a ticket and running into a screening of whatever was playing just to see if the Batman trailer was showing. We didn't have YouTube. Yes. We didn't have the internet, so that's the only way we really could see well, well, uh, trailers. That's you know? right. Well, the reason that it was just um, hastily chopped together scenes is because after all that bad press and that murmur about Michael Keaton, they thought, oh, my gosh, we better get something out there to allay oh, people's fears okay. um, to do it. And it absolutely worked. It was a huge success. Um, oh, 19, yeah. Look, 1989 was such a great year for um, movies. We had um, Ghostbusters 2. Star Trek, Indiana Jones five, and the Last Indiana Crusade. Indiana Jones, the Last Crusade, um, and Star Trek uh, Five. Yes, and you know that's why I feel a bit guilty about Batman because Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, the, the last Indiana Jones movie, I thought at that point, yeah, for a little while it came out. It broke the uh, opening weekend record of, of thirty-seven million. Batman comes along a little while Wait later, forty million, and then. Yeah. You know, the domestic champ for that year was Batman. You know, it was yeah. the highest grossing film. However, Indiana Jones' Last Crusade was the worldwide. It beat out yeah. Batman, so that's kind yeah. of good. Well, it's funny that happened because years later in 2008, yes. once again, Indiana Jones came back to the big screen. And who did he have to up go against was the Iron Dark Man. Knight. Yeah, and this time it's Batman with the Joker again, Yeah, except yeah. it was uh, Heath Ledger. And uh, the third movie in that trio, that little race to the box office was Marvel's Iron Man. Yes. But worldwide, I think uh, The Dark Knight made a billion, but Indy came in second with the Crystal Skull back in 2008. Okay. I was just, that's the thing. Da -da -da -da. Yeah. The side one, this is the reissue of it. Uh, Danny Elfman's on the first side. Mm -hmm. And then the second side is all the Prince thing. And yes, there was a love theme. It's the love theme to Batman, the charge of the Batmobile, the final countdown, Batman, yeah. beautiful dreamer. Oh, that's the song that's playing when Jack Nicholson's there. Scandalous is the Prince song. Okay. Anyway. That does sound vaguely familiar. Oh, well, I just, uh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> when you look at the credits for the movie starring Jack Nicholson, Michael Keaton, Kim Basinger, uh, a, a goober peter's company tim burton then it says batman yes robert wall pat hingle billy d williams michael go or jerry Gow, hall a jack palace no yeah. no it doesn't she jerry hall is not listed oh, on this okay as we all know her as mick jagger's girlfriend i forgot right. she was in the movie too yes jerry hall was in this movie yep and from the uh film clip uh let's stick together by with brian he brian uh ferry so like don't pay the ferryman, Brian. No, Ferry? let's no. That's Krista Berg. Anyway, let's not go down that path or the river sticks. Let's talk about the merchandise. You said that um, you know you couldn't go anywhere without um, hitting uh, Batman. It was on the radios. It was on the TV. On your T-shirt. Oh, it was everywhere. It was um, everywhere. I, I had a stack Books. of Batman stuff, um, but I've sold it all. The only two things I've left are uh, uh, my Batman here. Oh, that looks good. That uh... no, I was just looking at because I this, I've never played. Look, half of it's purple. That's the yeah. print stuff, and the other half's the Danny Elfman. You know stuff. what it looks like? A Pokeball. 
Oh, Pokemon. Yeah. yeah. Batman. Batman. Um, so uh, I've got uh, two two figures. The rest I've sold. This one here. Here we go. This is exciting. Ready? Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, I know. Oh, it's mine. so realistic. Mine right it's a little reissue. Da -da -da -da. Look oh, at yeah. that. It looks just like it's about the same height as Michael Keaton, too. He's a little guy. And this one, which has still got my uh, the sales sticker from uh, Retro Archaeology there. Um, this is actually, uh, you can take off. Um, take off. We're doing the Great White North now. <laughs> we can uh, take off his... his uh, You're taking uh, off his bat it's pants? Tied, it's tied on. But basically, that's uh, Michael Keaton under there. So you could actually uh, remove his... Oh, yeah, look at that. His uh, helmet. Oh, it's, not, it's a bit blurry, but anyway. That's all it I've got. Crazy. It was crazy. The merchandise was nuts. The t-shirts were everywhere. Uh, I actually got to see the movie. We didn't talk about seeing the movie. No. Here's what I did. There was a radio contest for WPLR, which I'm now on WPLR. Weird how life turns out. But anyway, back then they had a contest. You had to go to a local bar and dress up as a Batman character. And if you won the contest, you got to get two tickets to go see the world premiere of the Batman movie before it opened. It was like a, two days before or a week before. So I dressed up as the Joker. I had a white face. I had a green construction paper. I cut it up and I stapled it to my Indiana Jones fedora on the inside and made like a wig. And that was my look. And I just had a trench coat because I didn't have any purple clothing. Were well, you arrested bar, after on the way to that? As a flasher. <laughs> so I, wore, I had nothing on underneath. Uh, I won the two tickets, but because I'm, you know, kind of a scoundrel, I worked at a copy center and color copies were new. So I, I can confess this now. What? I made color, color copies of the passes, <laughs> double sided on a good heavy stock. And I scuffed them up. They look legit. And I even did the serial numbers on the bottom. Okay. There was probably only about 300 seats in that theater. And I made a little bit too many tickets that were not real. So when I went there that night, I had my real tickets. I feel terrible about this. So we went early because I said, let's go early because I knew what was going to happen. Uh, there was more tickets than there were seats. So sorry. Who did you give these just, tickets to? I gave them out to people and they gave them to friends and there might have been some money exchange here and there. You know, it is what it is. Did I'm sure those people... I'm sure they got to see Batman eventually. Did Just anyone uh, follow up why you couldn't get in or why they couldn't I, get I, in? I, I, heard, I heard the ushers trying to figure out what was going on because people had bootleg counterfeit tickets to the Batman premiere. And I was like, oh, that's terrible. I shouldn't be telling people this, but it, it happened. I'm very sorry. There's a place in Batman hell for me, but I got to see the movie with my friends a week before anybody else. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling bad. I really do. No wonder you could afford all that Batman merchandise from all those bootleg uh, tickets. I saw the movie. And then, and then, of course, you know, it is what it is. And I do remember on my birthday that year, I'm going to change the subject. Okay. We got to go. Be, I always pick a movie. And of course, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade was playing. But just like you, I was a little disheartened knowing that it was the last Indiana Jones movie. Yep. So it was bittersweet. And I remember seeing uh, going to the movies. I had my wife, uh, Sharon, and her friend Maggie were, was there. And I said, hey, what do you want to go see? Indiana Jones or Batman? And believe it or not, Maggie picked. She was like, you know, can we go see Batman? Because Indiana Jones is kind of depressing because it's all over. And I'm like, I know. So we ended up seeing Batman on my uh, my birthday instead of Indy. What do you want, man? It was it's not my fault. That, I, uh, I'm Indiana finding Jones out was... that you're uh, you know you were the uh, Lando Calrissian scoundrel uh, in your youth. Look at, look at this cool bat thing that I have. Yeah. Well, that's like, uh, uh, yes. Uh, I'm going like... to change the subject. So there, now it works. Yeah. Well, now now it works. But yeah. no, uh, what I was going to say about the movie is, yes, the movie adaptation that I alluded to before, we'll show a picture of it. There was two versions. There was a newsstand version, and then there was a comic book version, both covers done by my buddy Jerry Ordway. It was one of the biggest selling movie adaptations of its time. Anything with the Batman name on it, basically, in the 1989 year, 1990, sold like hotcakes. 
uh, Kenner was Kenner Toys that was still available. Yeah. They had yeah. the Batmobile. They had the toys. They had the action figures. Here's a little secret. They didn't have the rights to use Jack Nicholson's likeness on the Batman Joker figure for the movie. So if you bought the toy, there's a reason why it didn't look like the one in the movie because ah. Jack was holding out. But the packaging, I believe, had his face on the packaging. Yeah. So there's a little behind the secrets. But there was controversy because Bob the Goon, for some reason, the people were up in arms about it. It was like Sam the Tramp, which would come out next year uh, with Dick Tracy. They were like, you can't do that. That's not a good figure. And I don't know what it was about Bob the Goon. I, I think they said he was like, a, what, a homicidal maniac? There was something about it. That figure was just pulled out of circulation or was it didn't get a lot made of it. It was just very hard to come by a Bob the Goon action figure for the Batman movie. And that's the Tracy Walter character. I feel like that's, uh, you know, that's uh, Urban a myth? Marketing, marketing spin by going, Oh, we've got a peg warmer here. What do we uh, do? Oh, let's. No, say no, uh, I'm pretty sure. Sh- I'm pretty sure there's not a lot of Bob the Goon figures out there. Okay. Well. And then well, Sam. Uh, when we do the Dick Tracy, we'll do the yeah. whole story about Sam the Tramp and see if that's real. That oh, they good, got rid of that. Because I did thing. find just the other day, I've got a Dick Tracy cushion. So. Oh really? Yeah, I do. That's. Oh uh, well, you know what? Thing. We talk about Dick Tracy. You know what? Batman, good or bad. What the thing is, it set up such a high expectations for comic book movies that yes. everybody yes. wants to do a comic book movie if it wasn't for the 1989 batman movie believe it or not we would not have the tv version of the flash with my friend john wesley ship because correct. when that came out they said what can we do to mimic this and they made the 1991 uh flash tv show and they made the music was by danny elfman yep the and i think did, i think shirley walker was also involved um, with that, who also did the Batman, the animated series, which, you know, was again, oh, was huge. a riff yeah, on, yeah, yeah. Um, on the, the movie. And uh, yeah, well, that shared the look that um, the Flash. Oh, the look. Yeah. The Flash TV show. They have that weird. You didn't know what year the movie took place, yeah. even with the 1989 Batman, because the Batmobile looked futuristic. Yet the cars they were driving around, the Joker's guys were like a, a Dodge Plymouth or a, a really. Ch- and then Vicky Vale drove a Chevy Citation because I had one of those cars. It was like a really piece of junk car. He didn't know what was going on. Like, yeah. what year is this supposed to be? Is it supposed to be the, the 50s or is it supposed to be ma- modern day or yeah. whatever? There was really no idea what was going well, it on did, there. It did win an Oscar. I think it won the Oscar for um, production design. Um, yeah. It, uh, and rightly so. It was, pre- it was pretty spectacular. And really, that's the first time you saw, you know, like... Um, Again, not in spandex or oh, you know, that leather satin. You know, it was all latex. Yeah, yeah. latex and yeah. vinyl. You know, you Batman couldn't. He couldn't. He couldn't move his neck. He couldn't move um, his neck. No, no, not at all. But that no, that's no. got that good hero reveal. You know, you actually get to see him uh, move and do that. Yeah, stuff. with the whole close up thing. Sadly, the beautifully designed futuristic sets of Gotham City by Anton First. Mm-hmm. He tragically commits suicide not soon after the movie opens up. Uh, so yeah, the, the the set designer Anton first killed himself. Yeah, oh, I didn't jumped know off. That. Yeah, no, he jumped off a building. It was really sad. I don't know what was his backstory, but everybody just raved about the look of it. In fact, they even adapted the look of Gotham City into the comic books mm-hmm. to uh, to to mimic the look of Gotham City with the the large towers, the Gothic yes. uh, architecture, and all that. You know, that was really something to see because the look of that movie was also very unique for its time. Mm. as well i mean i so. think it did for uh superheroes what blade runner did for uh you know yeah future, futuristic, futuristic um, yeah. movies as well so there's lots to like in uh batman 89 obviously it um it uh had the sequel in 91 i think batman returns which was quite different and dark no it was no it was, it, no, it was, was it, 1992 was it 92 okay it was june 18th 1992 yep. because i got engaged on that weekend so there you go. And I remember you, coming you back. remember that date because of the engagement, right? Not because, because of the movie. No, because after we got engaged, I came back and I went to go see Batman that Sunday because it opened. I got engaged on a Friday and you know, Batman opened the, that day. the important thing is um, how many uh, tickets for that did you bootleg? Well, Ed. Ed, yeah. you know what's so sad? What's those I FBI remember, lights going I on? I remember. Home? 
I remember uh, significant dates in my life. My son was born when the last action hero opened up with uh, with uh, Arnold no, Schwarzenegger. I'm, no, I'm off schedule. I'm off oh. schedule now. I'm sorry. He was born when Godzilla with Matthew Broderick opened up. Yeah. So there, the last action hero, I believe, was on my wedding anniversary, my first wedding in 93. And the first date with my future wife, May the 19th, 1999. Would be the Phantom Menace. That's right. See? That's yeah. how we live our lives, man. <laughs> by, by the movies. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? But That's no, it. I mean, Batman's Batman. And it's inspired even to this day. 30 years later, I've got a lovely Lego Batmobile that took me forever to put together. I've mm -hmm. got a Lego bat wing that I got for Christmas that I put together. I don't think there's any other bat stuff left from that movie that they haven't made. Not yet. Know? I'm sure they'll make a, probably a bat cave or something like that. We've got obviously more Michael Keaton Batman to look forward to because he's going to be appearing alongside Ben Affleck um, yes. and Ezra Miller in and Ezra Flash. Miller in the new Flash movie, Flashpoint. Yeah, 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 yeah. But we talked to you, you briefly mentioned, yes, the Batman series movie was so impressive. They did make the sequel, which wasn't as successful, but it did inspire the Bruce Tim animated show that went on for years, the Batman animated series, which had the look of the film. Yes. And also had Danny Elfman doing the music score. So it was all kind of connected there. So That's there right. Was it sure? I think Shirley Walker, I think, was also involved with that as well, who was, who worked closely with uh, Danny Elfman. So uh, that's great. You know, you can get those. They're available on. Uh, are they oh, the movie? On, yeah, the, I was thinking the animated series. They're available. Oh, the on, animated yeah. series. Yeah, you could they'd get a beautiful box set that just yep. came out a couple of years ago. But the thing of it is, too, if you have HBO Max, all the Batman movies are on there. All the Batman animated series are on there. Everything you could imagine. Yep. is out yep. there and then, you know what there was a video game i'm pretty sure they it had a on the nes yeah so that was a cool thing that came out at its time too so yeah that was pretty do you good. remember the, yeah. i was gonna say the drive-thru they had batman going up to a mcdonald's drive-thru because there was batman toys that came out this is for batman returns and that's also a big they problem were, um they were in australia because i just sold a set of them at our shop um they were pen oh. toppers you got the penguin okay. You got uh, Catwoman, you got Batman, and you got the Batmobile. Yeah, 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 yeah. And no, uh, no, was, was that McDonald's or was yeah, it was McDonald's. We had McDonald's toys one, here. Yeah, it was one, McDonald's I, had the little the little uh, the duck. I remember that the Penguin oh, yes. Road were there. This is actually a brand new toy that just came out. It's only like fifteen dollars. It's at uh, Walmart. It's a replica of the Batarang. But look at that, it folds up. That's quite I'm cool. Just, look at that. That's pretty cool. It is. I'm just showing it because I'm surprised they made it, and it came out. And look, it has its own little bat holder. You oh, put it in there. Good. Yeah, for nineteen dollars, that's not a bad little Batman toy. So it's Batman funny, never they, goes they, They're happy to let that through, but uh, you know, a, de a deadly weapon. But Bob the Goon? Uh -uh. No, no, we can't have Bob the Goon. And don't forget, there was even Batman cereal that came with a Batman bang. Look at Michael Keaton. Dun, 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 dun. And if you want to watch it, how this tastes, like Ed mentioned earlier, go back and watch yeah. Mitch and Ed's show when I ate that horrible Batman cereal. But that's, right. that's about it. I mean, trading cards, you name it, anything you could imagine, you know, school supplies, underwear, yeah, board posters, games, um, games. And they, yeah. the, the legend is that Jack Nicholson made the most money out of everybody involved because he got a cut. Yep. Of all the yep. merchandising, I think at the time, now we talk about Robert Downey Jr., but there was some crazy number that Nicholson made like over 50 or 60 million dollars yes. from the Batman uh, merchandise from the movie. So, I mean, he, I don't think he really had to work much after that because he was set for life, you know. Well, that's way after that, he did um, A Few Good Men in 92 and he kept going on and on and, you know, doing a film every few years, but I think he could live off uh batman yeah. i suppose a lot of the actors could if they chose to um and it's still reaping benefits for michael keaton who as we said is coming back you know so many years after i think it's going to be fantastic uh to see his take on uh on batman it's really interesting we were just saying with the uh they just released uh, the director released a shot of uh batman's uh, uh chest plate with um chest plate yeah 
it was either blood or you said or uh, jelly, jelly or yep, raspberry right. jam on it. Maybe it was a jelly donut. Yeah. Hey, you didn't say what you how you found the film. Did you go see in the theaters? Did I did, like and I actually again I felt a bit guilty because I I was thinking, well, Indiana Jones. Why is in yeah. Indiana? And Indiana Jones was did phenomenally. You know. That oh yeah, year. it was fantastic. And movie. I really enjoyed Ghostbusters too. And then we were spoiled for choice um, at the movies, even Star Trek Five, which. I kind of enjoyed as well, you know? Um, so yeah, I enjoyed it, but I, I probably felt it was a little bit too dark and, and yeah. I being a super a child of Superman, the movie, um, I was expecting something a little bit. Um, Carrier, happier. Yeah. A little yeah. bit happier. I, I look, I, I enjoyed it and I did, you know, collect the toys and things like that. I felt like probably I had to, you know, yeah. um, because everyone else was, but um, I did enjoy it, and I think the main thing was the score and the production design. I yeah. really um enjoyed. So I didn't see, you know, I saw it a few times at the at the movies um that year, and you know, I went to see every other Batman after yeah. that. Yeah. You know, um, wasn't that big a fan of Batman Returns. Um, see, I like I like Batman Returns. Not a lot of people don't. I like the look of Batman Returns. I mean, it's that Tim Burton bluish white. Christmas, Icy look you know, and we do Christmas. speak yeah. about that in our Christmas uh, special, actually. Yeah, yeah, I did yeah, bring we, that up because, yeah, it's a, that's a Christmas movie. It takes yeah. place there because Burton, he did that with Edward Scissorhands. He did it with, did he do Adam's Family? No, I don't that think him? so. Oh, that's uh, Barry, is Barry Sonnenfeld, one of those. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think that was actually, yeah, the, the guy did uh, Men in Black. Men in Black, yeah. No, it's just, uh, he has that texture on his films. Tim Burton yeah. does. He has a Batman, it's like that bluish glow that yeah. night look yeah. with like a, a full moon lighting the, the set i just like the the way it looks and the elfman score you know i i think they work together you know perfectly i'm not a big fan of the uh dark shadows movie they did I, that was a little over the top uh, i said i didn't i quite i didn't mind that at all not but uh, yeah. again i wasn't a you're fan a big of the, johnny depp fan. i am yeah. but i wasn't a fan of the uh like the original source material so i didn't really know where it was Oh, yeah. No, I remember my sister's watching. Here's one for you. Imagine if they redid that. Uh, they continued the series. Of course, Val Kilmer, who yes. was at Trificon two years ago. Imagine if they kept Burton in the uh, director's seat as opposed to Joe Schumacher. Yes. And Keaton stayed around because that's when they talked about they were going to bring back Robin yep. and yep. it just got to be too much. And then they were going to have, you know, another villain. They had Two-Face, they had Riddler and yada 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 and it's just too much even howard stern talks about how they were going to get him to be the scarecrow mm. in, at one of these films and it was just out there and then eventually it just becomes a big joke upon itself with george clooney in there and the batman franchise kind of went and died it did <laughs> i think you know it, that's where the term toyetic came from because of uh batman and robin where they were designing. yeah there's too many of them oh my god and uh, you know the, the Arnold thing, Schwarzenegger. Yeah, I think that's a that it, the problem is that you know they have too many villains in it. Um, I think, and then it get that overpowers. You know, you're not seeing um, Mister Freeze and Poison Ivy. You're seeing right. Batman and Robin. So let's see yeah. Batman and Robin. It's like in Captain America and the Winter yeah. Soldier. I want to see yeah. a bit more Captain America than the the Winter Soldier, but that's just me. I mean, mm -hmm. I think the one thing that I was disappointed with with batman was that they killed the joker yeah you know i always kept thinking of a way they could bring him back like oh maybe that really wasn't him because yeah. you know but how he splattered all over the road the, the the walkway but yeah. uh they had that little bag that was still laughing like oh maybe somehow he transferred yes. his, like the emperor transferred his essence into a clone yeah. or i don't know how they could have ever brought the joker back after that fall and he got yeah. squished there yeah. Did you notice the animation that they use in the film twice? Oh, that always for, attracted me. Yes, for the like the, but, the scene where he's walking with the cape. With the um, cape, it was it was animated, so you'd yeah. see it, it looked like a, like an old Disney cartoon. And at the very end, when the Joker falls, yep. off yep. the tower, they they're, ah! and they're pulling back. If you look, it looks like an animated cartoon almost as it's pulling back and uh, Nicholson falls. I don't believe that's. Him, I think that was this animatronics or something. Yeah, like they could have they could have done a Alan Rickman from you know the Die Hard the year right, earlier. Right, that right, would have been right. um a little bit better where they dropped him and but um yeah, yeah some of the effects are not you know great they're a little clunky the film's a little 
clunky compared to today's films but oh you know, yeah absolutely it's still what, did you think of, fun what did you think of kim basinger i always thought she was like in a different movie like she didn't fit in well yeah yeah she was a bit i mean i wasn't a super big fan i think um i think probably uh sean young would have actually been a little bit i know better I she would have been a better I'm match back yeah i think she would have finished she had that darker you know more somber yeah. look to her as opposed to this big bright blonde bikini model it's like yep. why is she here yeah she seemed like she should be in a superman movie you know what i mean yes. it's like everybody everybody in that movie seemed a little shady i mean robert wall is the 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 the, the uh the reporter a little slick the 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 cops that were on the take they were getting the money off to the side everybody in gotham city seemed corrupt and then suddenly you have vicky vale who's like fashion model even though yes. she's supposed to be this photojournalist who goes to like war zones it's like Really? Did you bring a hair dryer and a makeup kit with you? Because you don't look like somebody who's going to get yep. uh, rough and ready and dirty and scuffed up. But Sean Young looks like she could have pulled that off, you know. But. Yeah, I felt she wasn't a good foil like Margot Kidder was to um, Chris. No, Reed, not at all. You know, no. I so. I wonder uh, why they got rid of her for the sequel. I mean, they just make a passing joke about you know her not being in Batman Returns. I. I I should yeah you I know, when, I, when Robert Wool was at my show. I should have asked him yes about yes. what happened backstage, you know. So yeah, I'm I'm be interested. I suppose again, maybe they just thought between my uh Michael Keaton, um Michelle Pfeiffer, yeah. and um Danny, Danny DeVito. DeVito. It was just getting yeah, a bit know. too crap and Christopher Walken as well. And Christopher you know, Walken was in it. Yeah. It's um, you know, yeah. maybe it was just getting a bit too crowded or expensive. Maybe she asked for too much money. I don't know. Well, she was also starting to date Alec Baldwin at that time. And that was a whole weird thing going on in Hollywood because he had just come off success with the hunt for Red October. Yep. And then suddenly he starts going out with Kim Basinger, and the two of them are like. Yeah, there's all these Hollywood gossip there yelling about the movies and backstage drama and yep. all that. And next thing you know, Baldwin loses uh, the Jack Ryan roles to Harrison Ford. Mm -hmm. Kim Basinger is no longer like the, the, the actress the in all girl, these movies. Yep. Yeah, the, the girl. Yeah. So I don't know what was going on backstage, but we'll never know. I do believe, wasn't she going out with Prince at one point? I remember when the movie mm -hmm. premiered, I thought she showed up at the premiere of the movie with Prince. Oh, okay. So yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know. know. But anyway, you know, what, what, overall, movie, what movie was doesn't have some, you know, controversy uh, behind it? But it was, you're right. It was a phenomenon and it's worth uh, a revisit. Um, and, you know, if you're stuck at home, what better way to uh, put on some popcorn? It moves pretty quick. I mean, yeah, it's only it a two hour movie. It, it doesn't slow down at all. You know, it's pretty fun. It is good oh. fun. It is good fun. So you can check it out on HBO Max or there's uh, the 4K box set or individuals if you want to get those and see it in pristine, uh, you know, better than it's ever been seen before. Um, but we like it. So uh, we uh, reckon, not that it, you care whether we like it. No, or I was going to say, I, I, think it, I think it was supposed to be on the big, it was on the big screen. For the 30th anniversary, there was a week they did Batman, Batman Returns, Batman Forever. And I think they did Batman and Robin. It was around the country that you can go yep. for like one night only. They had them. They had all the Batman movies shown, which is a disappointment because now looking back, I would, yeah, I would have seen it on the big screen again. It's been a while, you know? Yep. So, and with yeah. digital projection these days, you'll probably get to see a little bit more and won't have to squint so much, which is good. And I'm going to mention this real quick. Yeah. There is a Batman 89 comic book sequel coming out this summer, August, September, around there uh done by an artist named joe quionis but my friend jerry ordway is doing the covers for that book as well and the first story happens to be billy d williams as two-face so they do an adaptation so jerry drew what what might have been what billy d williams would have looked like if he became the uh the two-face character so look for that this summer at your local comic book store we'll have to That's we'll have to I check got. it out that's yeah. no, that's all good. And if you are interested in hearing us talk a bit more about, you know, anything pop culture, let us know in the comments. We really appreciate it. And we do reply to all your comments. Um, so, um, you know, we appreciate your input. But if you want to find out a little bit more about the show or get notifications, how can you do that, Mitch? Well, it's as simple as pulling a giant gun out and blowing the bat plane out of the sky, Ed, by hitting a button 
right below it, and you'll be alerted like the bat signal whenever Ed and I go on another YouTube excellent adventure into movies and TV shows of the past. That's right. Who knows where we'll end up next episode, but we're uh, going to head back to Gotham for a little bit more and maybe uh, watch Batman again this afternoon. But that's it for the show. Thanks so much for watching. This is Ed Dollister. And I'm Batman. <laughs> no, I'm Batman. Well, and I'm I back. will say, we're not doing that whole thing again, are we? No, oh no, 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 no. no All right, and we'll see you I'm next time. I'm Mitch Alec. Yeah. Bye. See ya.